Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 18, A Parent's Perspective. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to another edition of the Mac Connections podcast. And I thought for the next few podcasts, we'd get the impressions of our parents who are at, at home, like our students, mostly working from home and trying to homeschool. We've got Laura, one of our parents, whose daughter's in year 10, actually studying some VCE subjects this year, so is experiencing the challenges of remote learning. Laura, thank you for coming on board and, and, giving, and giving us some of your time. First of all, I wanted to get a sense of what it's practically like in a home where most of your family's home, if not all, and you're trying to juggle work and also the studies of your child. How have you found it and how's, what's it been like to manage? Thanks, Andrew, for having me. It's been an interesting experience, that's for sure. But um, we have faced a few challenges, I guess, challenges of my own and challenges from my children who are remote learning. I guess one of the harder things for all of us, and not just for the kids, and I'm sure we're not unique in saying this, is about maintaining motivation. So even for me at times, working from home feels like Groundhog Day. I don't know about you. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's important for us to let our kids know that as parents too, we are struggling at times too. So there might be days where we might not be as motivated as other days. Um, and we have good days and we have bad days and it's completely normal and it's okay. And I remember listening to a podcast on this very channel by when you were interviewing Jo Parker about motivation, we took some really good ideas from her. Yep. But we also listened, I was recently listening to a podcast by Osher Ginsberg. He has a great yes. podcast called Better Than Yesterday. Yeah. And someone was asking him about how he stays motivated all the time because he's got such a great energy about him. And he said sometimes just about taking just the smallest steps towards what needs to be done. So, for example, if he needs to do a bit of writing, he might just pick up a piece of paper and a pen and he'll just start doing some doodling. Or if it's something like exercise that he needs to do, he'll start by just picking up a pen and a paper. Oh, sorry, just picking up his runners and putting his, putting his yep. runners on. Yep. So it's amazing how we can trick our brains into getting going. Yep. And I think what the school has done really well in that area is actually introduce Zoom calls at the start of every subject because yep. that just helps, yeah, it just helps get the kids motivated at the start. Yeah. of the day and they can roll with their subject for that time. So that's really good. Now, Laura, you've got a daughter in year 10 as I have at MacKillop and I did some maths and they've been at school for a total of 13 days since March the 22nd when the first, when, and your daughter might have come back for, for some classes at year 11. But I'm wondering, has it been harder the second time around? Is it, has she struggled a little bit more this time around or has it been pretty much the same on both periods of, of remote learning and homeschooling. You know what, funnily enough, Andrew, it was harder the first time round. Second time round has been a bit easier and I think what's helped is just having those Zoom calls at the start of every subject that yep. helps get the day started. So yep. that's been really good. Also, I think they've learnt to kind of manage their days better and they've learnt to schedule their days better as well. Yep. So definitely for us, our experience has been second time round has been better. That's not to say that they are actually both, both my kids are eager to get back to school and just yep. have contact with their teachers yep. and just be able to have those face-to-face -face conversations with them about their studying. So yes, for us, um, second time round has been easier. And how have you balanced, how have you balanced support versus intervention on I must admit I'm at home and I'm a teacher at MacKillop, but I'm also a parent of a student at MacKillop. And 
There are some subjects where I feel completely ill-equipped to support my daughter, but there are other subjects where I'd, I'd like to be able to help if I can. And trying to balance support and intervention, making sure that you're supporting them getting the work done that you know has been submitted and we're actually able as parents to look at that, but also giving them the opportunity to be independent around their learners. Have you found that a difficult balance? You know what? I think I'm lucky and I think we're lucky and we have high school students that are reasonably independent in their learning. So they don't need a lot of micromanaging. I don't feel like I need to look over their shoulder and I'm certainly not equipped to help them with maths or yep. anything like that. Certainly I can help them with a little bit of English. The things I can help them with, I really rely on them to come to me and ask for help though. Yep. I won't intervene unless they ask me to. Um, but I find that receiving emails from the school every day from their subject teachers being copied in on those emails, it gives us a grounding for conversation with the kids to say, okay, I know you've got this oral presentation or I know you've got this test coming up or an assignment that you're preparing for. How's it going? Where are you at with that? You know, and are you facing any challenges? So that's been really good to know what they're up to um, and to give us an opportunity to sort of intervene if, if we feel like we need to. But I also have girls who, you know, are fairly emotionally intelligent, I suppose, and wear their heart on their sleeves. So we can, we can often tell if they're, if they're struggling. And it's just encouraging them to reach out to their, their teachers as well, which takes a, an element of confidence on a Zoom call to actually yep. put your hand up and ask a question. Yes. Uh, but that's, that's a good experience in itself, I think. One of the things that I've tried to do with my students at year, at year 12 in particular is, is get them to try and focus on the things that are of benefit or that they've gained out of the experience. Have you, is, it, is it clear to you what you might see that your daughter's gained from this experience in terms of how it might support her through what will be unit three and four subjects next year as a year 11 student? And then obviously the completion of her VCE the following year. Yeah, I think they're learning how to control their learning schedules and that they are responsible for it. So it's that organisational factor. And, you know, for the most part, yes, they're getting up later, but they're getting most of their work done between nine and three. Now, that's not always going to be possible when you're studying VCE. Yep. It's a little bit easier when you've got a year 10, but it's managing your time effectively. So whilst you're on a Zoom call that might only go for 10 minutes and you're given 100 minutes to do something that you think you might actually be able to knock off in, you know, less time than that, or then look at what you need to do in other areas and take that work and start doing it now. And it's going to save you time in the long run. And you're not going to end up doing, you know, hours of homework and weekend work if you can get it done in the scheduled in your scheduled time. And Laura, as a final sort of reflection, if I was to ask you, what, what do you think your daughter's missed the most by this period? What, what she missed the most? And I think even in reflecting on you and your family, what are the, what's something that, you've missed through this enforced sort of isolation? I think we've missed, we're, we're a bit of a social bunch. So luckily now the kids have the phones glued to their hand. I don't know if you've noticed yeah. that, yes. Andrew. But the yes. top. <laughs> so they're very well connected. They're very well connected with their friends. But I think for, for us as a family, I can say, um, we love to catch up with our friends and we can't wait to catch up with them again. But besides that, we can't wait to get away because yep. as a family, yeah, we're, we're always traveling and we know it's going to be a while before we can get on a plane and head to another country or another state, but we're actually very happy campers too. And we do a lot of caravanning with friends. So we have a few little trips booked that we've had to postpone a couple of times, but we're, we're just really looking forward to hopefully getting there this year sometime. That'll be good. And I think Laura, I think you'd agree. It's just the fact that you lose that instinctive flexibility, that instinctive sort of freedom to be able to spontaneously say, ring up and say, come around to our place for a barbecue or we'll come around to your place or we'll go somewhere. Do you think in hindsight that we might appreciate those things more than what we've been, maybe, maybe we haven't appreciated them as much and this period will make us appreciate those connections even more? 
Oh, for sure. We've always taken an advantage of the fact that we can hop in the car and go or pick up the phone because we've cooked too much dinner and have our friends over or our family over. So, yeah, going forward, we'll definitely have a greater appreciation of our, our family and friends and the convenience of being able to do whatever we want when we want to. So when we're out of this, final reflections, not something we wanted, but it's is it is it something that you can feel that, we can say that we've gained something from it or we've, we've, there's been some benefit in what has been a lot of pain, obviously personal pain for some of our families and, and pain as a society. Yeah, and I think some practical gains as well, Andrew. I think, you know, I don't, don't know about your workplace, but I know my workplace are taking this period as an opportunity to try and reimagine how we actually work in the future as well so having a look at what we did pre-covid and what we're doing now and what we can continue doing now you know and we've we've embraced technology and i know the school has too and i hope going forward you can sort of look back and go well do, do we really need to have say parent teacher interviews for example do they really need to continue in a face-to-face -face format or is zoom the answer especially to all those working people yep. It's, it's great. So, yeah, I think there's there's lots that we can take forward out of this, lots of positives. Well, Laura, I really thank you for your time and it's great to get uh, an impression from parents because we're in so much isolation at the moment that it's, you know, that sense of talking and communicating in a physical way in terms of being in the presence of each other is something that we're not able to do. So I really appreciate your time today and I appreciate your insight and I wish you and your family and particularly your children who are doing school at MacKillop all the best. And I'm sure that they'll reflect at some period of time and say it wasn't all bad and we've got something from it. And that's, I think, what education is essentially about. It's about gaining skills that we otherwise didn't have and being able to incorporate them into our lives. And it doesn't always need to be how to do calculus or trigonometry. Sometimes it's about what you've said, resilience, you know, flexibility, adaptability, but the importance of routine. So, Thank you very much for um, your time today and best of luck. And I hope that um, I'll be able to, to meet you in person and, and, and hopefully you enjoy those family gatherings later on this year. Thanks very much, Andrew. All the best to you too. Thank you. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the U12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.